Some news at 6 starts now. Good evening. A five-year wait is over. The trial has begun in the murder of an Israeli man in southwest Louisiana. KPLC's Teresa Schmidt was in the courtroom for day one of the Jonathan Vernier trial. The disappearance of Ran Masika and what presumably happened to the Israeli student and jewelry seller is beginning to unfold in Lake Charles Federal Court. His best friend describes him as a stable, trustworthy, optimistic, popular, and a good person. Authorities believe he died in southwest Louisiana at the hands of prison escapee Jonathan Veneer, who allegedly carjacked his van and killed him. U.S. Attorney Donald Washington says the details will be revealed as the trial progresses. In 2003, um, an Israeli student while tra traversing the United States picked him up as a hitchhiker and uh, uh, moved along I-10 at some point in time. And Mr. Veneer, we accused Mr. Veneer of, of carjacking, i.e. taking the van in which, which the Israeli student was, was riding, taking it from him and killing him. And... Um, uh, so this case is about uh, carjacking that resulted in death. If convicted, Veneer could get life in prison. Testimony got underway with five witnesses close to Ran Masika, who portrayed him as a devoted friend and son who was in almost constant communication with those closest to him as he traveled the country involved in the sale of jewelry. They say he would not simply disappear and they presume he's dead. Many were involved in the lengthy search for Masika after his disappearance. Court wrapped up earlier than usual when Masika's father became choked up while testifying about phone and credit card records. About a dozen family and witnesses are here from Israel for the trial. All involved have been instructed not to talk to anyone about the case. Teresa Schmidt, KPLC 7 News. Earlier, before jury selection, it came out that Vernier tried to escape from the Calcasieu jail this weekend. Deputy Federal Marshal testified this morning that they consider Vernier absolutely a risk as far as escape. Marshal Bo Bartel testified that Vernier has said he won't die an old man in prison, that he would go out in a bloody confrontation even if he has to kill someone, he's going to go home. So just how did Jonathan Vernier plan to escape? KPLC's Lee Pack joins us now with the details. Lee? That's right, Marty. Officials at the Calcasieu Correctional Center say they were well aware of Veneer's criminal history and that he was a flight risk. They say they had been monitoring him very tightly in the three or so years he's been here, but the yesterday morning he and another inmate saw the opportunity to try and escape. Authorities with the Calcasieu Correctional Center say it was around 10.30 a.m. that Vernier and another murder suspect, Jonathan Boyer, were being brought back after an hour of b-ball. It was when Vernier and Boyer were about to be put back into restraints that officials say he and Boyer tried to take the guard down on the recreation court. We're told Vernier tried to wrestle the guard down with a homemade metal shank. Jonathan Vernier, one of the inmates, grabbed the officer from behind and attempted to gain control of him and get his radio and keys from him. And uh, during the struggle, the officer was able to get control of Vernier and hold him down long enough for backup to arrive. After searching Vernier and his room, they found a map of the Calcasieu Parish hidden in the sole of his shoe. They say he got that from a phone book. They're now taking extra precautions to see that Vernier doesn't get another chance to escape. Late this afternoon, he was brought back from fed court in this van and taken behind the locked gates of the jail for intake. Both men are now charged with attempted aggravated escape while Veneer also faces battery on a correctional officer and having contraband in a jail. Marty. Thanks, Lee. Jury selection began today in a high-profile case of